Hi, um, you're all very welcome to this evening's uh, webinar. Um, this evening's webinar is uh, provided for the clubs um, to give information on all re resources that are available to help uh, club coaches and guide best practice within the club. Um, the webinar will be recorded and we will be putting it on, on YouTube so you can watch it afterwards and you can also distribute it to your club coaches as you feel appropriate. Um, I will email that link out to everyone that registered and the presentation for this evening, which have all the links embedded, uh, can also will, will also be sent out. So um, just for the purposes of um, this evening, we will leave all the, the questions until the end. Um, there's a questions box there at the top. So if you have any questions throughout, you can you can put them into that and I'll, I'll go through them as best I can at the finish. Um, I won't be going into massive detail on any of the programmes. Um, this evening's webinar is more to make you aware um, that these uh, resources and programmes are actually in existence. And then the links and uh, that I, all the different bits and pieces I'll be showing you throughout um, will will give you a lot more information. And if you need uh, additional information, then you can you, you can come to ourselves. Um, as I said earlier, I've, I've all the links embedded in the in the PowerPoint, and, and that will give you a lot of information on the programs. Um, I suppose by way of information, um, and if you need additional help, um, all the clubs in the province have a, a GPO or a full-time GPO or GDA assigned uh, to their club. Um, I, I would hope the majority know who, who they are, and if you don't, um, what I'd like you to do is get in contact with your county games manager and their information and contact emails will be on the last slide of uh, tonight's presentation. So we will we'll get into the into the presentation. Um, I hope to get through it in, in about a half an hour, so I'll be, I will be getting uh, flying through. So the, the first um, the outcomes of what we're looking at here is that very important that the role and responsibilities of the coaching officer, the new player pathway, um, our club support program, um, club plan and document, our coach mentoring program, uh, and nursery and skills development uh, resource for your four to, to seven year olds, Go Games, which is the seven to 11 year olds. Um, we have a, a podcast that has been in existence the last two years, which has a lot of information on, on various topics. Um, our club coaching manual, um, which has a lot of information on it, and we'll go through it in more detail later on. Uh, our educational um, offerings, and then some services like fitness tests and program design, video analysis and pitch hire, which may be of use to some clubs at the, at the Connacht Centre. So the first thing we're going to look at is the, the role of the, the coaching officer who is responsible um, for, for coaching activities within the club. So um, I suppose for the rest of the presentation, I will be flicking between maybe Word documents and uh, uh, website links and so on. So the, the screen may go blank for a second or two as I, as I flick between, between them. So this is our, our first document there. So it's the, the roles and responsibilities of the club coaching officer. I'm not going to read, read it all out there, but there's a description of the role, who they account to or um, report to. Um, so it's the executive of the, of the committee. So it's very important that in particular, the coaching officer um, knows um, everything that's in this and also the chairperson and secretary in particular that all them three um, are, 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 are in, um, in tune. So just I suppose in an overview, they're the chairperson of the club uh, coaching and games committee, um, that they're over the club school link for recruitment purposes uh, to get more players into the club. Um, they oversee the, the coach education and organize them, them type of workshops. And then uh, club coach planning. So around who's assigned as head and assistant coaches for each of the teams, child and uh, youth, youth games opportunities. Learning and develop, development there, which is uh, um, your coach education, like your foundations, award ones and award twos, which we'll be talking more about later on. 
uh, providing players to talent academies and uh, giving them a, a, a good experience there. Um, our camps, providing uh, if they're regional camps or club camps, uh, helping out with them and coming up with little hurling and development, uh, football development initiatives, depending on um, where, where the club is located and uh, schools initiatives there with the primary and uh, secondary school uh, and creating links. So some other additional information there in terms of the skills required and uh, other requirements. So you obviously have to need the time, you have to, uh, need to have the amount of time to do it and a genuine interest in the, in, in the GEA. So I will, uh, again, this document will be, this word document will be sent around in the email um, for everyone to look at. Uh, that will take a few days, but the, the link is also on the website, which I'll, I'll show you in, in a while. So just flick back to the presentation again. So the next one, which would be very important for the coach Nasser, but also the co all the coaches within within your club, is the new GA player pathway. And uh, I'm going to play a video now for approximately five minutes, which will give you all an understanding as to what exactly it is involved, right from when a, a child will come into a club, and um, right up until they play um, at, at adult level. The GAA, LGFA and Camogie Association have their roots in every community, providing lifelong experiences for all through a positive and enriching playing environment, whereby participants are supported in their developmental journey. To support the players on their journey, for the first time, all three associations The GAA, LGFA and Camogie Association have their roots in every community, providing lifelong experiences for all through a positive and enriching playing environment, whereby participants are supported in their developmental journey. To support the players on their journey, for the first time, all three associations have joined forces to develop a new player pathway framework. The pathway is aligned to our core values and is underpinned by six guiding principles. Club is core, player-centered, quality coaching experiences, as many as possible for as long as possible, connection and inclusive. The player pathway framework consists of three phases, foundation, talent, and elite high performance. The purpose of which is to develop players holistically as players and people by providing them with the right support at the right time to ensure they are equipped with the knowledge and skills to reach their potential, whatever that might be. Starting with the foundation phase or participation phase, where the majority of our players participate in the community. The club is the central component of this phase. This phase is divided into three stages, with the first focusing on physical literacy helping children to acquire and learn basic sporting movements and having fun through their involvement in club nurseries and school activities. In the next stage, children are exposed to the further development of functional movement skills and the early acquisition of the specific skills necessary to play our games. Here, children are introduced to low level competition, such as our Go Games model. Acquiring these skills will help participants remain involved in sport and physical activity for life. 
At the third stage, Foundation 3, players engage in sports-specific training and competition, demonstrating a real commitment to Gaelic games, as well as a sense of belonging to one's club and the Gaelic games family. It is important at this stage we provide players with positive experiences so that they are retained as lifelong participants by providing opportunities through our social and adapted games as well as more traditional competition. These experiences must centre around quality coaching and appropriate game opportunities. Here the club player strives for continuous improvement in order to reach their potential. In the F3 stage, some players who demonstrate that potential may be invited to experience the talent phase of development. This phase is an add-on experience to club-based activities at F3. T1 is the entry point for players who demonstrate potential to be classified as talented at a later point in their journey. Exposing as many players as possible to practices at this stage will assist the verification potential to move to the next stage, T2, where the player is given the opportunity to demonstrate their coachability, commitment, and their motivation to fulfill their potential. In talent stage, T3, the focus turns to continuous performance, improvement, and involves representation on senior school teams and inter-county underage teams. The final talent stage, T4, is where the player is at the cusp of breaking through to adult inter-county level. Many of these players participate in third level competition and require individual support from club and college coaches, as well as contributions from high performance professionals. Finally, when players break through, they have reached the elite or high performance stage. This phase is characterized by a high performance training environment involving many individualized support services. Crucially, the integrity of our unique pathway is maintained with players continuing to transition between the club and adult inter-county stages. We believe that our player development framework is an exciting prospect for the Gaelic Games family that will have a lasting impact on the development of our youth. Most importantly, the framework allows us to visualise a new approach to player development, a vision that accounts for individuality and variance, a vision that represents the realities of the developmental journey, a vision that has the end in mind. The endpoint crucially may not be on Jones's road, but for the majority, it may be within a club environment that supports, values and develops its people so that their engagement with Gaelic games is sustained for life. So that's quite a powerful video there, and um, I would encourage you to distribute that through as many of your club coach and club members as possible. So it gives a highlight of, of where the player and, and their journey, depending on, on how the player is, uh, is developing. So the video is um, in that link also, and at the bottom here, what we can do is there's a, there's a full uh, pathway guide that can be downloaded. And if you're working with a particular age group um, or phase, you can download each of them there and it's, it's, it's all detailed out. So the next uh, one we're going to come on to there is the, the club support program. So our club support program there, there's four phases to it and it's done over three uh, visits to the club. So the first uh, visit is probably is definitely the most important visit. 
Um, this is where there's an audit done of the current uh, status of the coaching and games within the, the club, um, which is done uh, predominantly through the form of a, a SWOT analysis. So what we look at here is that uh, two tutors will come to your club. Um, you get as many people as possible from the club involved, um, coaches, past coaches, the executive players, uh, past players, as many people as you can into the room and you find out what the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities and the, the threats are. Um, on that night or on, on a subsequent night, the, the club can do it. Um, the club must identify at least three to five um, coaching objectives to work towards for the year based on uh, the, the SWOT analysis. Um, night two then is uh, practical coaching assistance which is generally based around the, the, the objectives that have been agreed. So an example of that might be the club might uh, say we'll, we'll set up a nursery program, uh, but they've never done one before. So the, the GPO or the GDA from, from the region will come out and show the club how to, to run a nursery and upskill the coaches. And then on the third um, night, it's a visit from the county games manager, the, the tutors that performed night one and, um, and the the coaching officer, chairperson and, and secretary. So the first three objectives must be completed or well advanced within the first six to eight weeks for the program to be effective. So basically when the first night happens, um, it has to set uh, things in motion. Okay, we can't be putting them off for, for, for six or eight months. It has to start straight away. So the next uh, one then um, is the, the club planning document. So I suppose the club support program is something that we would see being done every maybe five to six years in a club. A club planning document is a yearly planning document, which we would see being done at the start of, of every year. So again, I will I will flick through this quite quickly with the vision, the GA, with the table of contents, um, the introduction there and the purposes of this and the club support program is that clubs can build self-sufficiency and self-sustainability um, so that we, we grow and develop our, our own players and our own coaches and that we, um, we get away from this culture of uh, paying outside coaches, which is, uh, is robbing clubs. Um, so the core values there, so everything we do should be based around the core values of the GA. Then we have the structures from national to provincial to county to, to club. I let you read that in your own times and um, the club details of so the name and then the steering committee members. So the ones filling out this, you would hope to have your chairperson, secretary, coaching officer, treasurer and PRO in, involved in it. Then we have the, the planning process. So where are we currently at? That would be different for every club. Then we do a, a, a SWOT analysis. Um, how will we get there? So we set our objectives, how we measure them, and then we review them at the end of the year. So this page is a very important page and probably the most work has to go into this page, I would say. So the top of it is looking at the club structures. Um, so you're looking at having an active coach now, sir, a coaching committee in place, do the meet regularly? Do you have a plan in place? Do you have a club school link? Do you attend Cool camps, guard the vetting, coaching qualifications, uh, children's officer, code of conduct, um, track and participation, and and so on. And I suppose, depending on the number of yeses or nos, you will start forming an idea of how the how the club is going. Next one then is in terms of participation. So you'll be trying to get the number of kids that are attending the local schools at the different age group to get an idea of what your playing population is. Then you look at the number of them that are actually playing in the club and from that we can work out what our, our playing participation rate is. Um, the number of teams that we have at a particular age group. So, you know, if you have 40, 40 players at a particular age group and you're only playing one team and it's the same 15 uh, or 20 players that are playing all in games, the club needs to look at putting in two teams so that all players are getting equal opportunity. The number of games, uh, that are played at the different age groups, challenge games, blitzes, the number of coaches with each group, number of qualified coaches, number of weekly activities and, and sessions. And when this is all filled in, you'll get a fair idea, you know, you'll, you'll start spotting the, the gaps within it. 
So we would encourage that it be football, hurling, and in the appendices there's there's ladies, um, football and camogie. Uh, we would always encourage the the one club model and that that everyone works together. So then from from the the structures and the and the club audit, we look at what's the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and you you'll have figured out a lot of them from from the page above. We must then try and get our our one to five objectives and they will be broken down then into quarterly just to, to, to try and um, make them happen. And this page is quite important too in terms of the five objectives must have a person that is responsible to it and when it will be achieved. And I suppose in a club that's, that's, that's working, we need to make sure that, the, that it's not the one person doing all of these. Uh, we need to, to share out the, the workload there. Um, then we have a mid-year review and the end of year review. So at the bottom then there's a there's a glossary um, and appendices with, with a lot more information there that I'll let you go through in your in your own time. So next one then is the the coach mentoring program. So I suppose connecting up all these programs are, are very important. As we mentioned, the club support program is where you get in a really large group from the club. It will be done every maybe five to six years. Then we would, would like to see the clubs having a plan every year because I suppose you don't really have a plan in place. You're, you're 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 not really going in the direction that you that you could be going in and maybe not as efficient as as possible and then the last piece would be the coach mentoring program where we will go in and work with individual uh, groups of coaches within your your club um, if if they need assistance depending on on where they're at so what this program is is that uh, the local gpr gda it's given a group of uh, coaches to take charge of and to help. That might be nursery group, goal games under 13, 15 or, or 17 group. And they work closely with the, with the head coach. Um, that, and we would recommend six to eight uh, contacts. So three would be online and one would be face to face. I suppose three uh, online is just that it makes it easier for everyone to attend. And then the last number, I, I know it says six to eight contacts, but we would say that the GPO or GDA um, you know, would be on the end of the phone if the if the group of coaches ever had a, a particular issue that they wanted to talk through. Um, the mentor uh, gives the coach the tools, guidance and support um, during their coaching experience. But it, it, it has to be stressed that the mentor must in no way become involved in any of the activities other than their coach mentoring role. So it's not a case that they're going in doing a load of training sessions um, or being on the sideline with the team or anything like that. It's it's very much a facilitation role so that the, the coaches can grow and, and get better in, in their own role. So there's, there's, I suppose, three opportunities. The first one there is the early season, um, where it'll be done online. Uh, the role of the coach, player pathway, goal setting, best practice. Um, Mid-season communication. Um, so this would be the face-to-face -face visit. We could go out, visit them doing a coaching session, you know, plan and review in that session, building rapport with players, how's their body language, building relationships with parents, that type of thing. And then an end of year review, so some self-reflection, player reflection, and review the goals that were set at the start of the year. So it can be done with play with coaches, beginner coaches, advanced coaches, um, or experienced coaches. And all of them coaches will have, have different uh, needs, I suppose, and and even within one group of coaches, you could have a, a, all three um, of of these type of coaches, and uh, as a group, they will learn and grow and and improve. So the next um, resource there that we're going to go into is the is the is the nursery program, which is the four to to seven year olds. So this is uh, placed on the Connacht GA website. And if you go to the tab at the top there, 
all the coaching resources that we've gone through this evening are in there. So in here we have nursery, so we have um, that's broken into physical literacy, football and hurling. So your physical literacy is your ABCs and your RJTs, um, which a lot of you would have uh, would have um, heard, I suppose, that terminology before. So with, within within each of these, um, we have broken down into three phases with a number of activities at, at each phase. And there's, there's videos there. So we'd say you have your running, which is your phase one, phase two or phase three, depending on, on where the player is at. The same for jumping, um, throwing, coordination and, and balance. So there's three phases um, involved in, in all of them uh, activities there. So again, we're not going to go through all the videos there this evening. Um, I'll, I'll, the link will be in the presentation that'll be sent out or it's on the website there after if you want to go through. So we have the same for football skills then that need to be developed. So you have your solo, your punt pass, your hand pass, your bounce, your body catch, and your high catch. Gives a description of each of them, the key teaching points, and what to look out for. And you can see the the, the three phases there. Um, and the last one then is the is the hurling, which again we look at all the key um, skills. So if you're grip and swing, your striking, your hand pass, your roll lift and jab lift, catch and solo. Uh, so again, key teaching points and what to look out for and and so on. And we hope to soon have a, a fourth um, tab here where we will have um, up to 20 sessions where um, they'll all be 40 minutes in duration, which uh, show how, how a coach could structure a session that might include physical literacy and one of uh, football or hurling or physical literacy and uh, football and hurling uh, combined. So I let you look at them videos there in your in your own time. So the next age group is um, is after the nursery, which is the goal games, and it's the seven to eleven year olds. Uh, I suppose this is where we're really getting them into the the, the games. And um, I suppose it, it, it probably should be stated first and because it, it needs to be probably reminded on, on a continual basis that this is policy and, and rule. So um, the games are played, it's small sided games, um, smaller pitch dimensions. Uh, so we're looking at, you know, seven, eight or side games. Uh, every child plays every game, no substitute. And that's the idea with the, with the name. So go games, every child gets a go. Modified playing equipment, so maybe smaller balls, smaller goals, depending on the age. And the key one for this age group that constantly has to be harped on at all the time is that there's no finals, no cups, no trophies. This age group is about the players playing, getting enjoyment, uh, liking playing our games, not about winning. They'll have loads of time to, to, to have competition after that. Um, there are at times you know tournaments that that happen where cups are put up and, and different things like that so it's one thing that i suppose the officers on the call need to be aware of is that players that are are sent off to these tournaments aren't actually insured to play in them because any of our games need to be signed off uh, by either county provincial or national depending on if it's a county or cross county or cross provincial um competition and if there is a cup or a final or any of that type of thing, it won't be signed off. And if it's not signed off, it's, uh, it, it's not covered by insurance. So that needs to be taken into consideration when, when players are, are playing. So there's, a, there's also a link there with a video of a lot more information on the goal games if, if that's needed. Uh, next one then. So I'm going to go through the next number. Um, we'll go through the podcasts, um, the coaching manual, uh, the educational offerings and the services. 
So I'm not going. I'm just going to stay on the on the website when I go across to it. I'm not going to keep flicking over and back at this at this point. So this is the the Go Games link, which I, which I mentioned a moment ago. So as I mentioned there, that's the Blitz application form, the national policy and the resources. So an application has to be made for any of the, the Go games that are happened outside, happening outside of your uh, normal county uh, program that's set down. So the video, what is Go games, why are we playing them, all, all that type of stuff. And it's all backed up by, by research. Um, the podcast is something that's ongoing the last 18 months. A lot of information there for coaches in the club from goal setting to psychology to working with child, youth, adult players, um, uh, different stories from clubs from abroad, from in Ireland, um, nutrition, um, all, all sorts of stuff like that. So um, there's 27, 27 podcasts in total there to, to pick from. Um, the next one then is the the coaching manual, which again can be found in the in the court in the the coaching tab. So this was a seventy eight page document, and what we decided to do was to break it down into to smaller chunks, because I suppose a lot of manuals can get just uh, put on a, on a shelf and and, and uh, gather dust. So we've looked at it in in four different segments: structure, strategies. Uh, guidelines and policies. So the structure there first is, you know, what is the, what should a coaching committee look like? Project coordinators, the role of the coaching officer, which we mentioned about here earlier, and reviewing your, your current position. Strategy then is your philosophy, your coaching style, quality of a coach. Then the guidelines is more stuff for coaches themselves. So, you know, under sevens, uh, training right up to under sixes, their player profile and all that type of stuff. And uh, then policies is more around the educational side of things. So like goal games rule, the role of the parent, practicing at home, hydration, nutrition, club code of conduct, social media. So there's a mountain of information there. I suppose the good thing about this is, you know, if you wanted to give information about the, the coach education pathway, which we're going to go on to next here, all you have to do is um, click on that link and send it on. Um, in an email or in a, in a message to your coach. So um, the, if, if coaches are interested in the coach education side of things, we have a number of offerings. So obviously a coach by law has to have vetting, safeguarding and a foundation course before they can coach any, um, any child. So our, 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 our youth player and um, our foundation course here is is detailed out the whole way through, and if you want to apply, you go through the the relevant people in the in the counties there. Now, um, just to make you aware, the foundation course is only going to be in existence for another maybe ten days or so. There's a new introduction to Gaelic games, which is an upgrade on this foundation course, and it's a collaboration between the the GA um, football and hurling ladies football and and camogie. And then we have your award two course, which is the follow on uh, with all the information there and the award two course, which is the highest coaching uh, qualification that can be attained at present in the in the GEA. And um, the last part then that I want to go through is uh, that might be relevant is the services that are available at the at the Connacht Centre. So we would say the likes of fitness testing, video analysis and uh, programs for gym programs so we do a full batch of fitness testing with uh, with teams so it's 250 euro uh, to send over a group of 30 players get a full report on them and so on and then we have a new um, app that we can uh, give the players or the programs right to the players which is another 250 euro for for the year and i suppose if a lot of you will have probably um, maybe uh, currently be paying outside people to do it or may have priced it and uh, you know that that 250 and 250 is is, is a very very reasonable rate um, there um, and that's all carried out by our um, strength and conditioning officer uh, Daniel Ford. 
The video analysis then is um, where we, we can record games at the centre, but also teams if they've recorded them at an external location, that um, we can we can break down the game into a smaller video that the, the coach then can can play to, to their players. So the link here at the top with the book and options uh, brings us right through. So if you go to the Center of Excellence, book and options, it gives you a full rundown through there as to what um, everything will cost from video and games to pitch hire to programs, um, meeting rooms and, and so on. So I'd just like to thank you all for coming on there this evening. Um, I have the contacts underneath um, of myself and the five games managers in, in the counties. And if you if you want any more information, um, I would ask that you, you, you get in contact with the county games manager and your local uh, GPO or GDA. As I said, all the information will be sent out afterwards. Um, and uh, the recording, the PowerPoint and the and the various uh, documentation. So we're just over the, the 30 minutes there. Um, I suppose we're finished there if there's any questions um, and I'll just have a, a quick look to see if there's anything in the in the questions uh, section there. So um, there's one question here. What would you advise for a, a, a club school link? So um, actually in the manual there, I'll, um, I'll flick across and I'll go through it here. We'll go to the coaching options here. I think it's in the manual. So we'll create a club school link. So all the information there is uh, is in it. Um, so I suppose we'd 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 uh, say that you should have a, a club li a club school liaison officer, which your primary and uh, post primary schools within your catchment area. Give the benefits there to the clubs, the schools, and the and the and the children. I'll let you read them down through them, and then we have a number of uh, I suppose things that you can do to to establish that club school link. So that you have a school liaison person in place first, that uh, you meet with the school principals to establish what support you can give them. Then maybe you do some coaching blocks into the schools and try and get them down uh, to the local uh, club, host some of the sessions, make your grounds available and some support in the in the wider community. There's another couple uh, of requirements there as, as well under underneath. So, um, there's a full amount of information there if you want to read read through that. Um, the next one there is how do you apply for the the club support program? So what I would say there is um, get in contact with your county games manager, and uh, he all the counties are currently running the club support programs. There's uh, 28 currently um, starting in in February. So depending on the counties, there may or may not be availability uh, this year. But uh, yeah, that's the that's the person that you would um, go to there. There's just one question here in terms of the workload of the coaching officer as well, um, that it can be quite large at times. So I would say in, in response to that is I, you probably should go back to your what what are your roles and responsibilities um, for for the job and agree them with the with the executive. And uh, then there's one area here that might be useful in terms of uh, it's in the coaching manual here somewhere. 
which might help lighten the load if we can get uh, more more people in to help. <coughs> so it's be what you'd have project coordinators. So where the where the coach master would break down uh, the various projects that they're doing within the club. Now the coach master still might do one, two or three of these. But we'd say you'd have someone looking after the coach education. You'd have someone that that school coordinator or liaison officer that we mentioned cool camp coordinator, nursery camp coordinator, under um, underage games coordinator and uh, or skills challenge coordinator. And they're just examples. They can vary between between clubs. Um, so that's that's all the questions um, in there for this evening. So I suppose I just like again to thank you all for for coming on and, and taking your your time this evening and uh, best of luck. And if you if you if you have any questions or need any assistance, uh, don't hesitate to, to contact us. Bye bye.